and Freddie Mac, and I quote here the economist, uh, uh, the state complicity in, in the case of, of this, these two giant companies, and this is my, the quote, allowed Fannie and Freddie to operate with tiny amounts of capital. The two groups had core capital as defined by the regulator of 83.2 billion at the end of 2007. This supported 5.2 trillion of debt and guarantees a gearing ratio of 65 to 1. So 65 times more credit and, and adventurous speculation than what they had uh, uh, capital for. According to uh, Credit Sites, a research group, Fannie and Freddie were counterparties to 2.3 trillion worth of derivative transactions related to their hedging activities. There is no way a private bank would be allowed to have such a highly geared balance sheet, nor would it qualify for the highest treble A credit rating. They use their cheap financing to buy higher yielding assets. Moreover, with so much at stake, no wonder the companies built a formidable lobbying machine. Ex-politicians were given jobs. Critics could expect a rough, rough ride. The companies were not afraid to bite the hands that fed them. Uh, they fed, uh, the reference is, of course, to the uh, American state. But why should they be afraid to buy the hands that fed them? There is a totally symbiotic relationship between giant corporations and the capitalist state. So therefore, they can do what they like. And as the economist is willing even to admit, they can also buy politicians who provide for them the legal jungle in which they could operate the way they did. Even today, they, we don't know the magnitude of the sums involved. Uh, the uh, money, the, the United States, that, that alone is $10 trillion. More, in, in fact, is in excess of $10 trillion. How is it going to be paid? because now states go bankrupt because they are incapable of paying for the interest charges incurred on the basis of the kind of borrowing and capital ex expenditure uh, involved in their uh, economies. And by far the guiltiest in this respect is of course the United States of America borrowing astronomical sums of money from everywhere, sucking it in these funds into the American economy. And one of the ironies of, of uh, uh, recent history, of late 20th, 20th, early 21st century history, is that uh, uh, China of all, country, all countries is the principal savior of the American debt. Uh, without, if, if the Chinese, Chinese uh, credit were, were to hold in, uh, the American economy would collapse tomorrow. Now, uh, these are extremely serious problems because if, obviously, even China sooner or later will see, will uh, feel the consequences. I quoted in uh, one of the essays you, you'll find in the book on uh, the challenge and burden of historical time on the question of economy. Towards the end I, uh, of the, one of the chapters, I quoted uh, Dan Xiaoping, uh, who uh, uh, was saying, uh, famous saying, famous Chinese proverb, it doesn't, the, the color of the cat doesn't matter uh, so long as 
it get, uh, catches the mouse. He meant, it doesn't matter whether it's capitalist or, or socialist or whatever else, what is important is to catch the mouse, great development. Well, I added to, to this quotation at the point, well, good, so long as the catch, cat catches a, 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 a mouse. But what if instead of happy mouse catching, you end up with rat infestation? <laughs> and that is on the horizon also of the Chinese economy today. Because this kind of problem, the problems we are discussing today, is so profound, so far-reaching. We are talking about a, a completely unimaginable kind of crisis in, com in comparison <coughs> to the, the uh, crisis of 1929-30. Uh, uh, that crisis was relatively small in, in comparison to, to what we have today. It was confined to basically the financial sector uh, originating the uh, stock exchange collapse in the United States and, and mo uh, the greater part of the world was not affected by it. And of course, uh, the consequence of that, uh, getting out of that crisis even, was very difficult for the United States. Depression went on throughout the 30s and uh, uh, it, it was uh, getting deeper again into depression, the, the American economy, towards the end of the 30s, and only uh, the, the outbreak of the Second World War saved uh, the country from this new and even more <coughs> profound this depression. Now, uh, we also have the problem of uh, sooner or later these credits uh, can, must be called in, and uh, 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 a few weeks ago, uh, uh, the Economist was referring to what you can find now on the uh, stock exchanges and in some uh, financial firms, uh, and that traders in the credit default swaps market have recently made bets on the unthinkable on the unthinkable, according to the economists, that America may default on its debt. Now, I don't think that it is unthinkable at all. In fact, it is, and it has been for a long time, as an absolute certainty. It's only a question of time when it will happen. And that's why I wrote, uh, uh, you find it in my book on page 963, uh, <laughs> uh, what I am going to uh, quote now about this problem. In a world of financial insecurity, nothing suits better the practice of gambling with astronomical and criminally unsecured sums on the world's stock exchanges, foreshadowing an earthquake of magnitude 9 or 10 on the financial Richter scale than to call the enterprises which engage in such gambling securities management. <laughs> when exactly, when exactly, and in what form of which there can be several, more or less brutal varieties, the United States will default on its astronomical debt, cannot be seen at this point in time. There can be only two certainties in this regard. The first is that the inevitability of the American default will deeply affect everyone on this planet. And the second, that the preponderant hegemonic power position of the United States will continue to be asserted in every way so as to make the rest of the world pay for the American debt for as long as it is capable of doing. But that's where the pre